The worlds of science fiction and fantasy often feature miracles of medicine. Think of Harry Potter. The kids are running around and they're waving their magic wands and they're saying spells like a pisky, which can mend a broken nose, or vulnera senentor, that can cause even the deepest wounds to be mended. Well, what if we had a real world remedy that could solve some of the toughest physical health problems we have today? We do, and it's called the great outdoors. I've been thinking that we need some sort of national advertising campaign to show parents just how important it is to get their kids outdoors. It could go something like this. This is your kid, and this is your kid on nature. <laughs> you know, if we actually did that ad campaign, we'd have to be honest and show the side effects that happen when you're on nature. Warning, the outdoors can improve your physical and mental health. Your body will produce vitamin D when you're outside. You'll have lower rates of heart disease and osteoporosis and MS and some forms of cancer. You're gonna be moving when you're outside, so you're less likely to get obese. You'll have more positive moods, lower stress, anxiety, and compared to a control group, kids on the outdoors, actually, they could focus a little bit better, especially if they had ADHD to begin with. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Peer-reviewed study after study has shown us that the outdoors are good for our health. So who do you think gets the least amount of time outdoors? Do you think it's A, chickens, <laughs> B, inmates, or C, kids? <laughs> yeah, I hear people yelling C, and you're right. Unfortunately, kids get the least amount of time outside. We believe in the power of nature so much that we have free-range chickens that get to be outside 24-7. <laughs> in many of our states, we have mandates that allow prisoners to get two or more hours outside every day. But sadly, our kids are not getting much. In fact, many of them are getting less than an hour outside every day. Now, you might be thinking, what about school recess, Ben? 30% of kids in the U.S. these days are getting less than 15 minutes of outdoor recess, and many schools have pulled out recess altogether. Now, this was not always the case. When I came home from school, and I grew up in Minnesota where it was freezing. When I came home, thank you. When I came home in Minnesota, where I walked up to school, uh, uphill twice, you know, both ways to school and back, we grabbed our snacks and we ran outside to play. This was true for my parents, too. They grew up in more urban areas like uh, Detroit in LA. Look at this picture. This is in New York City in 1950. The kids are playing right in the street. They're running around, they're playing with chalk, they're playing tag. Here's another picture. This is your infamous stickball game that we've all heard about in New York. But these games after school, they're not happening as much anymore. And unfortunately, it's having a really bad impact on our kids. The number of kids that are getting outdoors every day has dropped in half compared to their parents. In that same period, in just one generation, just 30 years, the number, the rates of child obesity, they've gone up, they've tripled. And perhaps an even more alarming rate is that the number of kids that are on Ritalin have skyrocketed 40 times to treat ADHD. You know, it is no coincidence that Rich Louvre, the author of Last Child in the Woods, coined a term, nature deficit disorder to describe this problem. Now, where I work, we get thousands of kids outdoors every year. Many of these kids are from the inner city, and it's their very first time in the woods. I'm here to tell you, it is really remarkable when you see these kids for the first time looking up at a 120-foot Douglas fir, or walking in the pads and smelling cedars for the first time, or looking at the stars upon stars that you can see in the Milky Way when you get out of the city lights. I've been taking kids out into nature for a long time. About two decades ago, I lived in New York City, and I used to take kids from Harlem and Chinatown out on trips. One time, I pulled up to Chinatown with a 15-passenger van that I had rented, 
And some kids were getting on, some fifth graders that I was going to take on a trip. They were, right, they were filing onto the van, and I was watching. These girls in the back seat, as they were waiting for their friends, were playing rock, paper, scissors. And just then, a gunshot went off right down the street. I was terrified. I hit the floor of the van, and I immediately looked back to see if the girls were okay, and they hadn't flinched. They were still playing rock, paper, scissors, as if nothing had ever happened. Now, an hour later, true story, these same hardened, toughened city girls were out in nature on a hike, and they were freaking out. <laughs> Every time a stick would break on the side of the trail, they were afraid a bear was coming to eat them. <laughs> now, I knew as their guardian that they were safe. In an entire year, throughout the entire country of the United States, we can count on fewer than four people that are gonna die because of bears and cougars, wolves and coyotes combined. I also knew as their educator that I had these kids right where I wanted them. <laughs> they were scared of bears. <laughs> no, I had them right where I wanted them because these were kids on nature. These kids were moving, and so they were getting oxygen to this vital organ, their brain. And they were a little bit out of their comfort zone. Brain scientists have shown us time and time again that when you're just a little bit out of your comfort zone, you're at peak learning. It is really remarkable how transformative the outdoors can be for kids. I'm reminded of my friend Juan Martinez, Juan grew up in South Central Los Angeles, and as a kid, he and his father went into their backyard, and they took a sledgehammer, and they literally smashed the concrete of their patio so that they could grow a garden. Later on, when he was a little bit older, he was in high school, a high school that I might mention has a 70% dropout rate. Juan got into trouble in that high school, and they gave him an ultimatum. They told him that he could either get detention or he could join the eco club, the environmental club of the school. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of the same thing. And you know, it sounds, it sounds like an easy decision, right, for most kids, but not for Juan, because you gotta keep in mind, detention was kind of cool to his peers, the eco club not so much. But he chose to do it. He joined the club because he wanted to do something nice for his mom. He wanted to grow jalapenos for her so that she could cook with them. So he joined the club, and this started a ball rolling that hasn't stopped. When you see Juan today, he's a National Geographic explorer, and he's a North Face ambassador. Now that is your kid on nature. <laughs> There's one more point about Juan's story that I want to make. You see behind him the Grand Tetons but you don't have to be in a national park to benefit from the beauty of the outdoors, to get sun on your face and to develop vitamin D and to get exercise. You just need to go right in your backyard. The story about Juan, all you have to do to get outdoors is to simply step out your door. <laughs> so if you're like me, you wanna get your kids outside but all they want to do is play video games. Well, I've started using this guy right here to get my kids outside. We've been playing with geocaching. If you don't know what geocaching is, it's this really fun, high-tech sort of scavenger hunt where you look for hidden treasures that other people have placed everywhere using your GPS. The other day, I was in the backyard with one of my sons and we saw this guy. Really cool, isn't it? I've never seen this bug before, he hadn't either. So we took our phone and we, we took a picture of it and we loaded it up to the internet through a program that we had found called iNaturalist. So within one hour of doing that, a volunteer scientist had gone online and she identified that thing for us. It's a banded alder borer, in case you were wondering. <laughs> the Kaiser Family Foundation has done a study that shows that kids are getting on average seven hours and 40 minutes of screen time a day. I'm gonna repeat that. 
seven hours and 40 minutes of screen time a day on average for kids in this country. We are not gonna beat technology, and I believe that we need to co-op technology to get our kids outside. We're building an app right now that's gonna drive kids off their butts, out into nature, exploring and going on missions. And the kids that do more missions, they're gonna get rewarded with badges and real world prizes. I'm hoping that when this thing works, we're gonna see kids that are spending seven hours and 40 minutes outside each day. So in closing, I want to share a story about a girl who was going through a really hard time. She wasn't talking at all. Apparently, she had had some real traumatic thing happen, and she had just shut down. Well, she came to our trails, and she was walking in the woods, and she saw this deer. And she had never seen a deer before. So she got really excited, and she went up to our naturalist, and she said, do you, see, do you see that deer? And the naturalist was shocked because she knew that this kid wasn't talking. So she encouraged her to keep talking and said, go get your friends and bring them here to see that deer. And she did. And she kept talking and talking. And for the rest of the week, she wouldn't shut up about that deer. <laughs> now, if nature can break through the barrier that that girl had built up around her, think of what it can do for your kids. As parents, we want so badly to do what's best for our kids. We have a remedy and it's free. And the side effects are actually really good for you. So encourage your kids to play outside after school. Use your phone if you have to to get them out there. Take a hike on the weekend. If you have to, grab a sledgehammer and break through the cement to plant a garden. When you get outside with your kids, you are constantly rewarded with the beauty that nature provides. And they're gonna get a boost in their physical and mental health. So get your kids hooked on nature today. Thank you.